When we talk about PowerShell structure, we've got to talk about brackets. Sometimes brackets make up the majority of a PowerShell commandlet. But what do they all mean? Well, here's an example of brackets, but we need to find out what this command is going to give us by adding these brackets in it. So let's start by taking a look at what different types of brackets there are. First we have the noun, the verb, then we have the object in the commandlet, and that is followed by the brackets. If you missed the discussions on nouns, verbs, and objects, then please take a look at the last two videos in this particular series. So the parenthesis bracket is what we're going to take a look at first, and you can see it's got the curvy ends to it. And then you've got the braces bracket, which is more curly, and then you've got the square bracket. So let's see how each of those are used in a PowerShell commandlet. First, we'll look at parenthesis. So if you're ever going to see the curly lines of a braces bracket, it's usually going to come with the curved lines of a parenthesis bracket. And that's because it's a compulsory argument. You could also call these a control structure. If we look at the curvy lines, which are the braces bracket, you can see that each one of those ends with a type of output. We've got caption, IP address, and MAC address. In order to show those particular items, we've got to have the compulsory argument, which our parenthesis bracket allows us to have. So we see object item in collection items. And if those three caption, IP address, and MAC address exist, then we'll be able to see those because we first told it to do so using those brackets above. Another thing this does for us is it resolves certain problems. If PowerShell can't decide in which order to process the various different components in the brackets below, then the parenthesis brackets will help make sure that there's order to this. Here's our example of the braces bracket. And sometimes we call these the curly brackets. And you use this whenever you want to store a statement block within a script. So a common place to pay attention to the braces style of PowerShell bracket is when you initiate a WHERE clause. And we see the WHERE clause in this particular commandlet. And it's after the pipe command. Now we got to use the pipe command because it takes the output of the get-wmi object-list and it passes it as input to the WHERE clause. So this particular commandlet is going to give us information when our object matches the term win32 and then anything after it, because you see the asterisk after the 32. Anytime you want to tag on an optional command, you would select the square bracket. So we see here a square bracket example. One of the most useful applications of the square bracket is to filter out properties beginning with. So in this particular case, we've got a get process, and it's filtering out just processes that begin with the letter S. Or we could do the R through S. Making sure you have the right bracket will give you the expected results. It does take some time and some practice to make sure you've got all your syntax correct, and having a programming background obviously helps as well. Microsoft TechNet at technet.com is also a big help when it comes to syntax and examples of various different types of brackets in a commandlet. In the last three videos, we've covered nouns, objects, verbs, modules, and now brackets. This makes up the structure of our PowerShell commandlets. And in the upcoming videos, we're going to talk about various different popular commandlets that will help you do work on a daily basis that you'll find useful.